great to be back here and I'm standing next to my lovely, darling, wonderful, fantastic, exquisite, lovely, beautiful, breathtaking, knee-jerking baby. This is my wife, Ruth, and I love her with all my heart and my liver and my pancreas and all that is within me. She is the essence of the quintessence of true love. And I looked in a dictionary one day for the word beauty and I saw her face. So, Oxford got it right, praise God. We've been married for 26 years and she is my precious, loving, darling wife and the mother of my only two children on the planet. Only two kids I have and she is the mother, praise God. She took away my virginity some years ago, 26 years ago. And it was a joy. <coughs> what are you laughing at? All right, you don't know about that yet. You ain't married yet, praise God. But please give a warm hand to my wife, Ruth Monroe. Thank you very much. It's really a privilege to be back with you tonight. And, you know, Dr. Monroe is such an obedient man. I always tell him it's in his best interest to continue to love me. It's true. <laughs> How many of you are single and satisfied tonight? You know, the level that you are at is the level or above that God will bring someone to you. That's right. So I want you to concentrate on preparing you so that God will bring someone to you, not 50%, like I said this morning, but 100%. Amen? And in Ephesians 5, 22, it says, Husbands, love your wife. But I didn't see where it says for the wife to love the husband. <laughs> so men, your biggest responsibility is to know how to love your wife and keep her fully satisfied with your love. Amen. I always tell Dr. Monroe, there's only one woman in the world that can satisfy him, and it's me. So we both have a responsibility. His responsibility is to love him, and my responsibility is to keep him satisfied. Amen? So... When we take care of each other, we give Satan no place. Amen. So until you are ready to do that, enjoy your singleness. God bless you. Good job. Yes, um, tonight, it's really a joy for us. We have our daughter, Charissa, here with us. son. Our son Charo is still in university. Um, she will be graduating at the end of the month and Charo will be graduating next year. Amen. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she perfect? Isn't she wonderful? Faith Singles Conference 2005. I tell you, this is a wild place. Now, I noticed that the 
a number of people off on the right and left sides of this uh, auditorium who will not be able to appreciate uh, if I stay down here. So I'm not sure that they will be able to have eye contact with me. I don't know. And so I might uh, consider moving back up there. But in the meantime, I want to uh, say that it's a real privilege for me to be a part of this conference. I want to give you, and I think you might have received some invitation uh, to the Bahamas this morning. Uh, how many of you got an invitation to the Bahamas? Let me see your hands. You got an invitation to the Bahamas? Okay, what we like to do is to make sure that everybody comes to the Bahamas. And one of the ways we want to do that is to make sure that you come and visit us twice this year because God lives in the Bahamas. And uh, uh, the ocean is crystal clear all the time in the Bahamas. And our weather is average temperatures 85 degrees. And uh, we go snorkeling every day, even on Christmas Day. So uh, we have a great time. And I want to at least take 60 seconds to give you an invitation to the Bahamas. So if you'd allow me to do that, I'm going to ask uh, uh, my uh, wonderful, my wonderful uh, tech guys to give me uh, a little signal. Can you shoot me to the screen? Is that possible? Oh, good. My, you're so smart. Where'd you get such an education from? You are involved in worship as a singer, dancer, musician, pastor, or if you simply desire his presence, don't miss these five days of pure, passionate, and praise-filled kingdom worship. Registration is $175 per person, with special rates for groups of 10 or more. Come out and learn how to restore the kingdom concepts of worship at ASAP 2005. For further information, call 242-341-6444 or visit our website at bfmmm.com. This year, you can take advantage of new training opportunities as the International Leadership Training Institute presents three courses, each worth three semester credits. March 3rd through 5th, Biblical Knowledge taught by Dr. Jerry Horner, a mentor of Dr. Miles Monroe and a world-renowned Hebrew and Greek scholar. August 9th through 12th, Basic Issues in Leadership and Biblical Principles of Leadership taught by our very own Dr. Miles Monroe, President and Founder of ILTI. November 1st through 4th, Models of Leadership and Biblical Philosophy of Leadership, also taught by Dr. Monroe. Deadline for application is February 18th for the March class, July 20th for the August module, and October 10th for the November module. For further information, contact the Office of Admissions at 242-341-6444, extension 294 or 236, or email ilti at carlwave.com. Well, thank have you, you forgotten the much. rush and excitement of being in the I think that that sound is completely, uh, I mean, the visual here is not coming through. And so uh, I just wanted to personally invite you to come to the Bahamas to our conferences and also to our leadership institute, which lasts for about three days. Three days of training and three days on the beach swimming. That's how we do it. So when you come, you get, you get revelation and relaxation in one place. You like that combination? Yeah. And some of y'all look tired. You need a vacation anyhow. So, <laughs> so you need to come. But uh, if you are interested in, in uh, coming to our conferences and also to our Leadership Institute, you are more than happy to, uh, we're happy to entertain that. And we do have uh, in the lobby at the book table some brochures. To can, you can pick them up. They're all free of charge. And go home and pray about it. And then if you want to come on a vacation, if you've never been out of America, I think you need to take some time and get away. And, and the Bahamas is a good place to come. There's a direct flight from there here too. So make sure you uh, come on down to where the action is. Amen. Uh, before we get started, someone said to me that we didn't have our singles main book here. I was very sorry to hear that because I know many of you wanted to get that, that book in your hand today. I spoke at my office and there was some uh, misunderstanding as to fire shipment. And so uh, we do have, however, uh, six of our major best-selling books on singleness and relationships here. And uh, I want to remind you of our newest book entitled Waiting and Dating. Uh, when I was writing this book, the title I gave the publisher was Waiting, Dating and Not Mating. And uh, the book is a very practical book. If you are 16 or 61, this book will help you. 
this book contains about 28 years of study and research in it. And the book looks like this. It's a simple cover, but it is actually a book that I believe will also help you to bring up your kids. If you've got teenagers in your home and don't know what to do with them, don't know how to talk to them about sex and relationships, and sometimes as a parent you are intimidated by that, this book is what I call your other parent. Okay, and uh, what I did with my son and daughter, who is my daughter here today, is that we would encourage them to read books, but also to read, even pay them in the past to read them. You know, you say, read this book, I give you $50. And that's a good thing to do, you see, because young people like money. So they read it, and they got to come and tell you about it, and give them 50 bucks. Now, the $50 is worth it because you just saved them a lifetime of problems. Okay, so you might want to get this book, especially if you are unmarried, and if you have young people in your home who you want to help uh, live a very disciplined life, this book will help you uh, with that. Uh, some of you, I think we almost sold out of these books already, so if you are interested in getting these books, you might want to rush to the center and get them at the end of the meeting. Uh, one book is called The Purpose and Power of the Male, the other one, The Purpose and Power of the Woman. And uh, I tell you, these are our best-selling books for the men and women. Now here's how you read these books. If you are a man, you read this book, but you also read this book, because you see, most men don't know who they are, and for heaven's sake, they don't know what a woman is either. If you are a woman, you should read this book first, but then you should read this book, because most women don't understand men also. And that's why we have, and in training, we tell both couples or both sexes to read both books. This book talks about the five unique needs of a woman, and most men don't know what they are. This book deals with the five needs of a man, and for heaven's sake, most women still trying to figure them out. So if to save yourself the drama and the trauma, make sure you get this information. If you are married, you definitely want to get these two books right away. Because much of your marriage, if you're not aware of these needs, are experimentation. And that's why there's so much frustration and hurt all the time in your marriage. Because even though you love your spouse, sometimes you're not aware of what their needs really are. And, uh, and it's, ama it's amazing to understand that a woman's needs are completely opposite to a man's needs. And a man's is opposite to a woman's needs. So uh, sometimes what we do is we try to, to, uh, we try to meet the need of our spouse based on what we need. And that is not the way it works. Okay? Uh, for example, a man does not need love. And most women think men need love. Now women need love, but men don't need love. That's why the Bible says, husband love your wives. But it never says wives love your husbands. Because men don't need love. What men need more important than love is respect. That's how men spell love. They spell it R-E-S-P-E-C-T. This is serious. It's very important. And most women think if you, you know, if you, if you buy a guy some roses or if you send him a card that he's happy. He's not. He doesn't need affection. A woman needs roses and cards and phone calls. But a man doesn't. He needs something different. Okay? So it's important to know the difference. And men, it's very important. That women don't need sex. They like it now, but they don't need it. <laughs> oh, you all are ready tonight, aren't you? No, women need affection, not sex. And so sometimes men believe that once they had sex and they're happy, the woman must be happy. Not necessarily true. Because that's not what she needed. She needed affection. And so uh, you got to know the difference so that you don't make mistakes. You married? Praise God. You need this book badly then. <laughs> Save your wife all kind of frustration. So I want to recommend that uh, this set of books to both of you. Uh, if you're not married, get the information now so you'll know how to look and how to understand the persons who may be interested in you, and also how to counsel people. These books are good for you to become a good counselor. Even as you are unmarried, you can help people. Knowledge is what makes a good counselor a good counselor, not experience, but knowledge does. Okay, the last item I want to mention is uh, very important. It's our latest book on relationship. It's called The Purpose and Power of Love and Marriage. And in this book, we talk about the 15 differences between a male and a female. And if you are unmarried, after you read them, you're going to be glad you ain't married. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you knew how opposite a male is to a female, you'd pray for revelation every day. <laughs> Completely different. But they're equal.
but different. And so it's important to get that information, and I want to recommend that you get those. Uh, I autographed about maybe three, four hundred books this morning, maybe more than that, maybe eight hundred or so. And uh, I did that because I wanted to give you a personal encouragement from me, plus my signature is worth $56,000. So if you're smart, you keep that signature with you. Amen. Uh, these are the secret weapons we have here. One is called The Secrets of the Heart. The other one is called Marriage is Still a Good Idea. These two books are loaded with counseling information for individuals and couples. So you want to take advantage of those and bless yourself. We got some tapes and CDs out there on straight talk to men and women and sex, etc. That'll help you. Now, what I'm going to do tonight is very, very practical, and we're going to get down to some heavy stuff. This morning was part one. Is that right? So, were you blessed this morning? Oh, we had a good time, I tell you. Okay, so I'm going to ask my technical friends to pull me up on the screen. Please write in your notes. This is our topic tonight, part two. The myth of singleness. The what? The myth of singleness. Singleness is a myth. What you've been taught about singleness is the source of your problem. Because what you've been taught is that singleness is something negative or bad or something that you want to get rid of. We confuse singleness with unmarried. Singleness is not the same as unmarried. Write that down, please. This is a very important point I'm making. We believe that if you are unmarried, you are automatically single. That is not so. And I'm going to prove that tonight from scriptures. The reason why your relationships don't work, and some of you have been trying for years to make relationships work. You keep going in and out of them. Or maybe you wonder why you can't even enter one. And the reason why people avoid you, even the opposite sex avoid you, you're going to see some reasons why tonight. This statement I have up here is important. It's okay to be single, but it's not good to be alone. God is not against you being single. So we're going to talk about this myth of singleness and we want to capture the advantage of being single. My marriage of 26 years, happy, wonderful marriage, is a result of my still being single. In fact, it is my singleness and my wife's singleness that makes our marriage so successful could you imagine 26 years living with somebody no stress no fights no hassle never was a harsh word spoken in our house against each other for 26 years My daughter blessed me last week, touched me so deeply. She said, Daddy, I want to marry a man just like you. You know, your greatest testimony are those who live with you. I was not born this way. I had to get knowledge. And the greatest discovery I ever captured about relationships is understanding the advantage of being single take these notes down a couple of thoughts first there's a book that i want to recommend to you called the purpose and power vision we talked this morning and we ended on the subject that the first thing god created was a single not a couple and that single was a male and God gave that male some specific instructions. One of them related to a vision. And that's important. 
the word work in Genesis 2 verse 15 is the Hebrew word which means to become. And God commanded the first single, become yourself. Don't look for someone first. And the only way to become yourself is to discover yourself first. The problem in most relationships is that we meet people with no vision. Don't know who they are, where they're going, don't know their purpose and we marry them. And if the blind leads the blind, the couple falls into the ditch and the children follow them. Tragic. We must get this single concept correct. All right, let's move quickly now. And I want to give you a couple of principles. The first principle to write down is this. Singleness is the most important state of human development. What is? Singleness. You are running away from the most important state of human development. Why do we know that? Simply because singleness is the foundation of God's design for humanity. God created one human from the soil. He never went back. Today we got six billion of them on the earth and God only made one. Women did not come from the soil. They came out of the man. So God built the human family on one single human, not on a couple. We've been taught that the foundation of a society is marriage. That is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the foundation of the human family is a single person. Marriage is the second phase, not the first phase. Do you know that all the instructions that God gave to man were only given to a single person? God never told Eve about the tree. You gotta read your Bible carefully. He never told Eve to work. <laughs> he never told Eve to cultivate he never told Eve to protect his presence called Eden all instructions were given only to one why because the single is the key to the marriage your marriage is only as good as your singleness. Write it down if you weren't here this morning. No matter how much you want a good marriage, it will never be better than you. So if you don't like your relationship at the moment, you change. <laughs> Write this down, please. Number three, God began the human family with one single human being and not a couple. Number four, God forever settled and established the foundation of the human relationship when he created the single individual first. And that means that the key to any relationship on earth is the single state. Now the problem is we confuse singleness with marriage or not being married if I if I am able to express and communicate to you this one point and that one point is that being unmarried does not equal singleness I would have been successful here tonight Most of you came to this conference because you are suffering from a disease. <laughs> OK, 
okay, don't get afraid. No, it's all right. The disease is a personal one. It shows up in different ways, like a sense of loneliness, a sense of being unworthy, a spirit of self-depression, self-pity. It even manifests in jealousy. It's a disease called loneliness. And being a born again doesn't get rid of it. <laughs> We're going to deal with this disease tonight. Write this down, please. Very important. God created singles. Genesis 127. It says, And the Lord God created man in his own image. In his image created them male and female. See, God didn't make a couple. He made singles. He made the male first. And then he made the female. He didn't make husband and wife. God did not choose Adam's spouse. I was brought up just like you, very religious. And some of you are very spooky. I counsel some spooky people in my life, I tell you. <laughs> and then you, we walk around believing that God has chosen one person for us and we got to find them. What oh, that's a tough odd. Six billion people are kneeling in a haystack and you got to find him. Find her. That ain't fair, God. God does not choose your mate. God created Eve, created Eve. Now, I did my Hebrew studies in college and I was shocked when I read the Bible in Hebrew and the meanings were so different from your Western Bible. And in this verse it says, And the Lord God created Eve, formed her, and he built her. And then it says, He presented her to Adam. The word means to parade before. <laughs> in other words, he gave Adam a power of choice. And if God chose your mate, he would have robbed you of the power of choice. And you could blame him for your problems. God will never violate your will. That's why going to hell. He cannot stop if you choose. God doesn't even save you without you accepting it first. He did everything necessary to save you and redeem you. But he cannot choose for you he says choose you this day yes. whosoever will now if God doesn't choose your salvation why would he choose your spouse come on use your brain you smart people God ain't that stupid he ain't gonna take responsibility for your bad choices so God gave you a brain with five hundred billion cells he gave you a mind in that brain that can calculate analyze and investigate and explore and test he gave you his word for a standard and a measure gave you the Holy Ghost for guidance and wisdom how dare you blame God for your bad choice so stop saying dumb things like I had a word from the Lord last night you're supposed to be my wife. The Lord told me that tonight you will wear pink. Some of the dumbest things I've heard. I, a lady told me one time, she says, I had a dream last night. And the Lord said, when I come to church today, the first man that walks in with a green coat shall be my husband. Guess what? It was me. <laughs> and I'm married. So you know it was a demon talking to her. Stupid stuff. Some of y'all look guilty already. Look at that. <laughs> right. 
Write this down, please. This is very important. We're going to deal with this point. The priority of singleness. Singleness is the first building block of the human society, not marriage. Sing, therefore, God began the human race with a single, not a couple. So God's focus is not marriage first. It's singleness first. Let's deal with it in a deep way. Hey? Singleness is God's idea. It is God's concept. It is God's foundation. Therefore, God's principles of success are interesting. Uh, in Genesis 2.18, and I want you to write fast now because, you know, they gave me a limit here. The first thing God said to this man after he gave him instructions, and please get this section for the morning. Was that good this morning? Ooh, I hope you get that one this morning. Now, if you get the morning session, this is where we pick up from that right here. Because the last thing we spoke about was that God created the one single male first. And God gave this one single all the instructions for life. Then when God had finished, God then said, It is not good for this man to be alone. Most of you confuse alone with lonely. That is not the Hebrew word. God said it is not good for man to be what? Alone. I did my research. That's why the books are important because they'll save you from a lot of research. I've done the work for you. And it's important to get those books for your unborn grandchildren. You even ain't married yet. Because you cannot teach what you don't know. And you repeat what you learn. And you know it ain't true. In other words, what you learn ain't right. The word alone. Here's what it means. Powerful word. The word alone is two words put together in Hebrew. And the English tried to get it right. It's the word alone. Look at the word carefully. It is the word A-L and O-N-E. That's exactly what it means in the Hebrew. It means all one. It is not good for this man to be all in one body. It has nothing to do with loneliness. It has to do with composition. Let me explain something deep, but you got to follow me because this gets very heavy here. Uh, I need... Can you come and help me? Yeah, just stand here. Quick, man, you got to walk fast. My time's going. Don't waste my time. Praise God. Turn around. <laughs> What's your name? David. Oh, Adam. Okay. So this is Adam. Now, when God created Adam, and by the word Adam means dark earth. It was not a name. It was a description. So use your, you'll figure it out anyhow. <laughs> Adam, when God created man, now, now the reason why I want to show you this because if you don't understand this principle, you can't understand Genesis. Here's the principle. God never begins anything until he has finished it. This is very important. <laughs> so God, Isaiah 46 verse 9 says, I am God, there's none like me. Verse 10 says, I always set the end before I begin. And I make known from ancient times what is yet to come. I say my purpose will stand. It's a powerful verse. When you study that in Hebrew, it actually means, God says, I always end things first. And then I back up and I finish and I begin them. This is an amazing God. That's why he says, they're none like me. I finish things first. Then I back up and I start them. That means whenever God begins something, that is evidence that it's already finished. That ought to make you scream. Do you know why? Because you began. The fact the 
that you are here is proof that there's something already finished that you were born to start. I'm talking to myself. Praise God. Follow this principle now. Therefore, when God began the human race with one human, he had to have had already finished every body. Whew, I can't teach this. So God finished every body first. <laughs> then God took every body, billions of spirits, and put them all in one body. And he called it Adam. You get it after I'm gone, you get it. So when God began Adam, he had already finished you. So God took everybody and put them in one body and put the one body with everybody in the garden. So now we got one body with everybody in the presence of God. And God begins to talk to the one body with everybody because everybody was in the one body. And whatever God said to the one body, he was saying it to everybody. So, whatever this one body does, everybody does. So if you slap this one body, you would be slapping Everybody, if you curse this one body in the garden, you'll be cursing everybody. If this one body sin, then by one man sin entered into the world and sin and death was passed upon all. Oh, come on, clap your hands. It's the truth. One body. So now God has one body with everybody and the first body he put everybody in was a male and a single ah. so after God had given the male body with everybody in it instructions then in verse 18 of Genesis 2 God says, now it's not good for you to be all in If you read that chapter, it says, for every bird, there was a bird. For every cow, there was a cow. For every fish, there was a fish. For every dog, there was a dog. But for man, there was none like him so God when he wanted another body didn't need to go and start from zero he went inside the one body pulled out another body and called it man with a womb the wombed man Are you getting this? Let me show you what the word alone means in the practical Hebrew. Write this down. Now God never said it was not good for man to be single. That's important. God never said it was not good for man to be single. God is not against your singleness he created it as a matter of fact if there was ever a time that you should pursue 
I never want to cease being single is now. Let me explain. You see, we got to define singleness first. Here's singleness. Am I going too fast? Good. Just by the tape. All right. The word singleness, here's what the, the definition is. And this is what it means. Stay right there, Adam. Don't move, Adam. I'll talk to you in a minute. That's Adam. All right. The word singleness, first of all, means separate. Secondly, it means unique. And so, thirdly, the word single means whole. Now look at those words. That is what single means. To be single means to be separate. Separate means to be apart and detached and to be different from others. The word unique is important. Here's what it means. It means to be original. To be distinctive. To be special. Look at those words. And the word whole means to be complete in yourself. The word whole means to be unified, to be one in yourself, to be one with yourself. What a powerful concept. To be whole means I am one with myself. I am in love with myself and I am in, in love with my value. I don't need you to be somebody. I am somebody all by myself. Whole. Now look at that list. Is there anything on that list you would like to stop being? It is that list that makes you attractive. And that's why people are avoiding you. <laughs> Look at that. First of all, are you separate? Let me talk about it for a minute. What does it mean to be separate or apart? It means that your best friend is you. Separate means that you don't imitate anybody else. Separate means that you don't need to cut your hair like the latest fashion or to wear the same clothes that every... Oh, come on, somebody. You are so separate, you decide your own style. But that ain't you. You wearing FUBU. Sean John. Nike You're not separate Separate means that you don't need to be around people all the time to feel important Are you single yet is the question Are you afraid of a quiet house? always got to have the TV on or some music going are you afraid of silence don't answer just think about it can you go to a four-star restaurant by yourself and order lobster by yourself and eat it with a smile on your face are you single yet Look at number two. Unique. Are you an original? Don't say yes yet. Because you're emotional right now. Are you, do you have a sense that you are original? That there's no one else like you? That your value is so high, they got to climb a ladder to reach you. I mean, are, are, you, are you so mm, aware of how distinctive you are? That it's a pleasure for people to come in your circle. Or are you bribing people to come around you because you need them so badly? Do you need people's approval so badly that you would do anything to get it? You are not unique. Are you whole? Think about it. 
The reason why marriages don't work are on this list right now. That's why marriages don't work. That's the list. We marry people who are not whole. We marry folks who are not distinctive and unique. We marry people who were never separate from their parents. We get 50 year old children still looking for someone to like them. Getting mad when people don't approve of them. They are sick. It's going to get better in a minute. Watch this. <laughs> Write this down, please. Very important. Here's the real problem. The real problem is being all one. Not single. Matter of fact, God said it's not good for man to be alone. And here's why. Because to be alone means to be all one or all in one. And it is not good for man to be all one. One. Now here's what the word alone means. And I study this word and please write these down. The word alone means, number one, to be exclusive. Number two, to be isolated. And number three, it means to be solitary or to be in a solitary state. Now God told Adam, it is not good for you to be isolated. That means the only one of your kind to be exclusive that means there's nothing else in the garden like you anywhere and you are a solitary being you are the sole one of your kind God said this is not good now I want to get into some deep stuff but I got to come back and teach that because there's, there's a deep side to this you got to understand oh I wish I had time no I ain't got time no it's too deep and, 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 and I need a couple of days to deal with that but, it's, but you see, if you don't understand that deep side, you can't understand why it's not good for you to be exclusive. Let me give you one point that may help you. I got 12, but I'll give you one. All right. Here it is. God is love. God doesn't have love. He is love. That's important. God doesn't give love. He is the stuff. Now the problem with that is, love has to love. So in order for love to exist, it must love. <laughs> so God himself must <laughs> love. Otherwise, God will not be fulfilled. So God created himself <laughs> so God could love himself so God created his own image so he could love it I'm trying to help you here so God created man in his own image because God needed something to Love and God is a spirit and he has to love one like him. Oh, let me give you a principle. Love can only be complete when the receiver is just like the giver. I repeat this. Love can only be complete when the what? Receiver is just like the giver. Jesus made this point when he said these words. He said, you cannot give pearls to swine. Why? If you give a diamond ring to a pig, he will mash it in the mud, roll over it and forget it. Because he is not like you. He cannot appreciate the value of your gift. Stay with me now. If you give your cat a golden cup to drink milk, the cat doesn't care. That's why it's a lie to ever say again that a dog is a man's best friend. But that ain't true. God didn't give you no dog. He gave you a lady. Am I talking good? 
So you see, in order for the giver to be fulfilled, the receiver have to be exactly like the giver. That's why the Bible never says that God loves his angels. Never. Because they are not in his image. So God created you. God is a spirit. So you are a spirit. You came out of God's spirit. So whatever God consists of, you have. God is love. So you are love. And then God loved you so much. Now when you love so much, when, when you love someone, the next natural response is to give. So God got so excited when he created the first spirit being. God got excited. And I believe he did because the Bible kind of sort of shows that he got excited. You see, when you're in love with someone, you do crazy things. I mean, you go temporarily insane. Promising that woman the moon, you can't even get to the roof. But when you're in love, you say dumb things, man. And what God did, when Adam was created, the Bible says, And the Lord God created man in his own image, in his own likeness, verse 26. And in verse 27 it says, And the Lord God said to the man, Be fruitful, multiply. Now, the first thing God gave the man after he produced him, God says, Let them have. Let them have. He gave them the whole world. He gave them the earth, the whole thing. And then God realized, oops, they are spirits. The earth is physical and spirits cannot appreciate physical things. So I got to take them out of the spirit world, put them in the physical world so they could receive the gift and enjoy the gift and dominate the gift. So then God did a second operation in chapter two, verse seven. God went to the soil and formed an earth suit. And then God blew into the earth suit, the man. And now the man is on earth in a body called male. The man is a spirit, but the body is male, dirt. Follow me carefully, please. So God now has the man who is his spirit, his nature, his image in a dirt body. But all of that man is in one dirt body. So the man who is one dirt body is love. <laughs> so God looked at the man in the male and realized that the man has the same problem he had only a few will get this one so god says oops that's why when you read the bible in verse 18 it says and the lord god says this is not good <laughs> don't you get it god says oops I produced the same problem I had. He cannot dwell all in one like I was all in one. And I need someone exactly like him. He doesn't need another spirit because he got me. Ah, oh, come on now. So he needs another body. Because love has to give and love has to love so God went inside the male and pulled out another male I need him come can, can you stand right there stand behind her please so God pulled another one male but you see he is the male God designed the male 
to be like him. The male is a giver. So if you look at the male's body, there's nothing to receive. Is that clear? Is it clear? This is an exit. Clear? It is illegal to enter and exit. Oh, shout amen, church. Your country is now facing the challenge of people attempting to legalize an exit. That's all. But no legislation can change this exit into an entrance. Now shut him! No. Come on, singles of 2005, where the fake? Shout hallelujah! So God produced a giver. I mean, all the male is designed to do 24 hours, anywhere, any day, in the kitchen, in the car, on the floor. Woo! It's the gear. It's true. Built to give. Come on, brother, say it with me. Built to give. All right, brothers, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you married people know what I'm talking about. Because you think the guy had a demon. That ain't no demon. He's a locomotive. He's a generator on all the time. Ready, ready, ready. <laughs> Am I right about it? One time a lady came to me and she said, Pastor Miles, my husband got a demon. I said, really? She said, yeah, he's a nymphomaniac. And Pastor, he's one of your elders. You got to pray for him. I said, what's the problem? He wants it all the time. In the morning, in the night, in the midday, at lunchtime, dinner time, supper time. Even when I'm sleeping, he wakes me up. And I'm wondering, he's got a demon, Pastor Miles. You got to pray and help me. He need deliverance. I say, honey, I can't help you because I got the same demon. Give me five, man. Everybody say, born to give. Born to give. A male is created by God to be a giver. So when God took the feet, the male, the male out of the male, he did some reconstruction so that she could become a receiver. So if you study a woman, there's no place for her to give. She was created. Oh, ladies, listen to me. This is so good. A woman was created for no other.
other reason than just to receive, 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 receive. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. More love. More money. More attention. More care. More concern. More touching. More loving. More clothing. More houses. More shoes. More shirts. More. 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 The receiver. I finish with you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now remember, in order for the giver to be complete, the receiver has to be exactly like the giver. That's why God could not go back to the soil. Do you know that they've proven scientifically that every cell in your body contains the chromosomes and the DNA for an exact clone of you? The Hebrew word that you can translate rib is not rib. It simply means peace. God produced the first clone because she had to be exactly like the giver. So a woman is only designed to be loved. She's only built to receive. That is why when you take from a woman, she malfunctions. Come on men, write that down in capital letters. That's why the Bible never tells a woman to love a man. But it commands a man to love his wife. Very important. And so God did something beautiful. He said it's not good for this man to be all in one. So he went inside the man and took out one. And put that one in a body just like his, except he made a few adjustments and made it a receiver. Now God is complete, spirit to spirit, and now man is complete, flesh to flesh. So he says, we have become one spirit already, we are already that, but you will become now one flesh. Yeah. By the way, this is very important to you spiritually. You see, spiritually, you don't need a man. Because spirits have no gender. Write it down, please. You already have God. You don't need a man or a woman to worship God. Because they that worship God must worship Him how? In spirit. And you are already a spirit. You and God are complete. So God created a perfect receiver for the giver. The secret to my life with my wife is that I know this stuff. See, and I put it in this book, in these two books. I'm telling you, that's why we have no fights for 26 years. I figured it out from God. We got the happiest marriage in the world. Why? It ain't because we got some magic. I understand where she is. 100% receiver. Matter of fact, that's why I give her her own bank account and say, look. And every month they put stuff on it. <laughs> why? She is a receiver. Everything a woman sees, she wants. And you men don't understand why. He said, but baby, you just bought these shoes last week. Yes, that was last week. <laughs> so brother, listen to me. If you ain't married, let me tell you something. If you can't give to her, leave her alone. See, 
And brothers, here's how it works. Even though she has her own job, her own bank account, and her own paycheck, ain't nothing to do with you. Come on, talk to me, ladies. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Some of you men saying, oh, please have mercy on me, dog. No, I'm going to teach you the truth. The truth going to set you free. Praise God. So, God made for him a help suitable. The word suitable means to fit. He fits. She fits him perfectly. He's a giver. She's a receiver. And that is why two males cannot function in God's program. And two females cannot function in God's program. When two givers try to give, it's called an abomination to God. When two receivers try to receive, it's called an abomination to God. Malfunction. So if you got those tendencies, I'll pray for you tonight. You come back to your senses. Uh, now the reason why I did this this way, because you see, this morning I wanted to show you that the woman did not come from his back. She came from the front of him. So the woman is in front of the male. This is what God's image looks like right here. So stop saying, and don't you ever say again, that behind every good man is a good woman. That's not true. In front of every good man. See that lady there? Is a good woman. So when the devil pushes on her. See the problem is, in this city, we got women carrying the load and no one carrying the woman so they have stress high blood pressure diabetes cysts fibroids cancer why because the stress is killing them and that's what's wrong And when the children come, they come here. When the devil attacks the children, they fall on mama. And when mama falls, papa catches everybody. Come here. Step down one step, please. Step down one step, please. Stand behind him. Praise God. Brother Daryl, can you come here, please? Give a good hand to my assistant, Pastor here, Daryl. Stand behind him. I want you all to watch how God works, all right? Singles, remember this all your life. That's the picture of God's program. Yeah. You see, when you attack the children and you attack the woman and she falls, the man falls and Jesus catches him and the father catches Jesus. Listen to the scriptures. The head of every woman is man. The head of every man is Christ, and the head of Christ is God. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah. It's God's program. Men, that is the most beautiful picture for you to remember. You men, because when you take on a wife, you are not alone. God has made you a personal promise that if you cover her, he will cover you and Christ will be covered by him. So he's going to pay the bills. He's going to make you debt free. He's going to keep you healthy. He's going to take care of your children. All the men shout yes. All the men stand up and scream. Quick, 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 quick. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Thank you, Adam and Eve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Give a big hand. Praise God. Write this down, please. The blessing of singleness. God said it's not good for the man to be only one of his kind. So he made him another kind like him. And made that kind a receiver. Therefore, singleness is a state to be pursued, not avoided. Because when you are perfectly single, then God provides the opportunity for you to give yourself away. Very important. To be single should be the goal of every married person even. Because you need to be separate, unique and whole to offer value to your husband or your wife. See, when you are whole, you're not a burden to your spouse. Oh, I'm going to talk about this for two minutes. You should get married because you got so much excess. You need someone to give it to. You shouldn't get married because you're starving for something. You become a burden. You're looking for attention, looking for approval, looking for someone to make you feel important. That's why you get married. You are a burden to me. See, if you ain't nobody, and you marry someone who ain't nobody, nobody got married. Am I right about it? And so you got two people all the time trying to use each other to get to be somebody. And ain't nobody in the house. Serious reality. Very important. Write this down, please. Some of the loneliest people in the world are married people. So marriage does not solve loneliness. It just exposes it. If you feel lonely tonight, you don't need marriage. You need to meet yourself. Let me give you some thoughts that will blow your mind. Loneliness is magnified by marriage. It magnifies and exposes the fact that you are not unique. You are not separate. You are not whole. Singleness is an amazing thing. Adam did not know he needed a mate. Did you realize that? God was the one who said it is not good. Adam didn't care, wasn't interested. Why? He was so complete, so whole, so fulfilled, fulfilling his purpose, naming animals, ruling the garden, bringing order to the place. He was so busy, he didn't know he needed a mate. Here's the key. You are ready for marriage when you don't need to be. Oh, I said something deep this time. When you don't need to be married, then you are ready for marriage. Here's a statement you want to write down. You are not ready to live with someone else until you can live with yourself. Why? Because your relationship can only be as successful as your singleness with yourself. And I promise you that no human can meet your ego needs. They cannot meet your soul needs. And so we get married for folks to build our ego and give us a sense of pro approval and value. You are sick. You don't, you don't become a spouse when you are in that condition. You become a patient. Where you go in. How long you gonna be? Why are you been away so long? Why you gotta work late again? You, you are sick. <laughs> See, when you are whole, you don't need nobody to be somebody. And it's a privilege for somebody to have your body in the presence of their body when you are somebody. If someone says to you, I love you, I need you, oh, I need you, run. <laughs> if 
bad problems. <laughs> you ever heard this? You know, some of the songs are amazing. They, they show how corrupt we are in our minds. Sounds like, if you leave me now, you take away the biggest part of me. Ooh, girl, baby, please don't go. Now, wait a minute. If she leave, she can take what? What's she doing with that part? How about this one? Oh, girl. Come on now. Come on now. Help me, somebody. Help me. I'll be in trouble if you. <laughs> Y'all ain't saved. You mean people have that much control over your life? How about that one? Eh? Another one? You are the sunshine of my life. Yeah. <laughs> That's a dangerous song. Because I just told you that you are my son. Which means when you go away, I'm in darkness. Ain't no one supposed to be that kind of light to you. God's will is simple. I am a son all by myself. And when I meet you, you are another son. And when we get together, we have a constellation. Shout hallelujah somebody. And just in case... You don't appreciate how valuable the sunshine is and decide to leave me and go somewhere else. Just remember, you don't take my light away. I have my own light. So go away and let me shine on. Come on, shout amen. Are y'all getting this? Single means that if I invite you into my life, you should be so happy to get something as good. I don't want to preach. And you would be a fool to leave something as good as Write this down, please. Marriage is not the solution nor the answer to being alone or single or lonely, rather. Secondly, marriage does not solve aloneness or loneliness, it manifests it. It is possible to be unmarried and not be alone. Marriage was not instituted to solve the problem of being alone. What did God do to solve aloneness? He made another human to solve aloneness. He didn't give Adam a wife. He gave him another human. That's why you can live the rest of your life and never get married and be happier than married people. Because you don't need to be married to be fulfilled. All you need is other human beings in your life. And give them your love and your compassion and your care. And that's what Jesus did. And that's what Paul did. And that's what Mother Teresa did. And Corey Ten Boom did. And those who changed the world, they did it without a spouse. Some of you are so busy looking for someone else. You ain't got time to be yourself. 
And when you do find someone who you're looking for, you ain't got no one to give them. I got one minute and 25 seconds. I got to go. All right. Let me just close with this. Until you are separate, unique, and whole, you are not ready for marriage. It is that simple. So don't pursue marriage. That's not your priority right now. Pursue what? Singleness. Don't fall in love with people first. Fall in love with yourself. The greatest commandment in the law is to love God and then to love yourself. And you will love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Very important. Until you are totally single, marriage will be difficult. Because you try to use marriage to compensate for your lack of singleness. You become a burden to the other person. I thought I would close with this statement. When you get married, you don't marry a person. You marry a history. Marriage is the collision of two histories. So when you go down to the altar in your white dress and your tuxedo, you are not going toward a person. You are going toward a history on two legs. And that's serious. Because if you're 30 years old and he's 30 years old, that's not a person. You are marrying 30 years. And in one night, 60 years is in a house. And half of them you know nothing about. This is serious business. And the older you are, the more years you don't know. So if you're 50 tonight, and you meet someone who's 50, and decide to get married. You are walking down the aisles to 50 years of unknown. And in one night, a hundred years is in the bed. <laughs> Serious business. And how much of those years you know nothing about? Including the AIDS virus they carry. Including the three children in Alabama you know nothing about. So don't rush into marriage. Amen. I have 15 more slides, but I got to go. I want to pray for you. Did you enjoy tonight? Yeah. There's an anointing here. Don't disobey my instructions. First of all, if you have been religious, but not in personal relationship with the King, Jesus Christ the Lord, he sent me to Detroit for a few minutes to invite you back home. You cannot be yourself unless you meet him. Because only he can introduce you to yourself again. And you don't need to seek no one else until you've discovered yourself. And if you would like to do that tonight, I want you to stand up on your feet. The Holy Spirit is going to work a miracle. He's going to begin a journey of self-discovery. Bow your heads, everyone. Father, in Jesus' name, you know every heart. You know where they're at. Those who have been backsliding, those who have been dabbling in secret sin, those who have been away, straying away from you slowly, you caught them tonight. You love them tonight. They are your image. I pray that they will respond correctly right now. May no one leave this room 
without reconnection to their source. For they came out of you, Father. And Jesus Christ can bring them back in you. For he said, if you abide in him and his words abide in you, you can ask anything and you'll bear much fruit. Let tonight be the night that singleness returns and the journey to singleness begins. For many here who have been straying away, who have never had a serious relationship with you, just churchianity but no relationship. Lord, let it begin tonight. Give them the kingdom of God. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one disturbing anyone. If you would like to make that decision, I'm leaving in the morning, I'm gone. And I'd hate to think that I was here, you were here with me. He spoke to you and you didn't respond. And I'm back in my country tomorrow. He sent me just to get you. Thank you, Father. If you want to respond to his voice right now, to make it right with him, stand up on your feet. Right where you are. Just stand up quietly. I want to see you. Others are praying around you. Don't be ashamed of this. His love for you is too important for you to be ashamed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Anyone else, please? God bless you. Stand up quickly because I'm getting ready to go out of here. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you. 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 Anyone else? Quickly. Restoration of your relationship to God is the most important act of singleness. God bless you back there. I see you. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. Oh man, I'm so excited about you.